I'm talking today about dicarbonyl proteum and genome damage in metabolic and vascular disease. In dicarbonyl stress, there is increased protein glycation by methylglyoxal. Here I compare the characteristics of uh, protein glycation by methylglyoxal and with glucose modification. Looking at the protein chemistry, glycation by glucose ha retains positive charge and electrostatic interactions, while methylglyoxal glycation loses positive charge and all electrostatic interaction. Lysine 2.1 is 2.1 fold enriched in functional sites, while arginine residues 3.8 fold enriched in a functional site. For metabolic aspect, Fructosamine is repaired enzymatically. On the other hand, hydroimidazolone has slow dynamics reversibility. Chemical relaxation time is 20 days. In physiology aspect, knockout of repair gene increases fructosamine addict with limited physiological effect, while knockout of glyoxylase 1, the, which toxify methylglyoxal, is embryonically lethal. Protein modified by methylglyoxal at functionally important sites are members of the dicarbonyl proteome. Protein identified so far are albumin, hemoglobin, crystalline, mitochondrial proteome proteins, extracellular matrix protein, collagen, fibronectin, and laminin. Collagen is no usually modified at integrin binding sites. Transcription factors such as SYN3A and HIF1 is dicarbonyl proteum. And voltage-dependent sodium channel, NAV1.7 and NAV1.8, apolipoprotein B100 of LDL and apoA1 of HDL, are identified to be the dicarbonyl proteomes and many others. Physiological characteristics of these proteins are that the dicarbonyl proteome are linked to metabolic dysfunction, it compromises the interactome and is associated with protein dysfunction and disease progression. Component proteins are targeted for proteasomal dis destruction. These proteins are increased in diabetes, renal failure, neurological disorders, and other chronic diseases and aging. Dicarbonyl proteum is suppressed by the enzymatic defense against glycation, glyoxylase 1 system, and aldoketo reductases. We measure protein damage marker by gold standard technique, a stable isotopic dilution analysis by LCMSMS. In our lab, we quantify about 20 chemically defined oxidized, nitrated, and glycated amino acid and all other amino acids. Interpretation of the measurements of these damaged amino acids are that urinary excretion of glycated, oxidized, and nitrated amino acids represents the flux of damage to the physiological proteome in the whole body and damaged amino acid residues of proteins are linked to functional impairment, susceptibility to damage and repair replacement. These uh, protein damage markers may be used as diagnostic biomarkers, particularly in multi-factor algorithm, diagnostic algorithms. When protein are damaged by glycation, oxidation, and nitration, they undergo cellular proteolysis to form glycation, oxidation, and nitration amino acids. These glycated, oxidized, and nitrated free addicts are released into plasma filtrate and released into plasma and filtered in the kidneys and excreted in the urine. There is a minor contribution to the flux of glycation, oxidation, and nitration free addict by digestion of damaged protein in food. These free addicts are filtered in the kidneys. With declined kidney function, Mg glycated free addict accumulate profoundly. No other addict is as important as MGH1 in physiological system.
DNA also suffers methyl glyoxal damage. The major DNA damage is imidazopurinone in healthy people. And one in 10 to five nucleotides suffer protein MG damage. Damaged nucleotides are found in leukocytes and uh, corresponding nucleosides are found in plasma and urine. So glycation of DNA by methylglyoxal appears to be the major type of DNA damage in healthy human subjects in vivo. Thank you.